For centuries, the Manila Trench slumbered in silence beneath the South China Sea, a 990-kilometer fault line hiding strain between the Eurasian and Philippine sea plates as they collide at nearly five centimeters each year. But in late 2024, a swarm of small earthquakes and millimeter shifts in northern Luzon shattered the illusion of calm. Scientists now warn this silent boundary may be ready to unleash energy rivaling the world's biggest disasters. So why has it stayed so quiet while the threat keeps building? And what signals are we missing right now? The Manila Trench carves a deep curving line along the edge of the South China Sea, stretching nearly a thousand kilometers from just off the southern tip of Taiwan to the northern coast of Luzon. Beneath these waters, two immense slabs of the earth, known as tectonic plates, are locked in a relentless contest. The Philippine Sea Plate, moving westward, dives under the heavier Eurasian Plate, forcing itself downward at a rate of about 9 to 10 centimeters every year. This is one of the fastest subduction rates on the planet, and it happens mostly out of sight, far below the ocean's surface. Cartographers and geologists have mapped this hidden boundary in detail. The trench itself is not a single crack, but a wide, complex zone where the two plates meet, grind, and deform. Its central and northern segments, especially those running parallel to Luzon, are the most active. Here, the plates are pressed together so tightly that almost no movement is released at the surface, what scientists call a locked fault. Instead, strain accumulates year after year, like the slow winding of a spring. The entire region is shaped by this invisible tension. Islands rise and fall, coastlines shift, and coral reefs bear silent witness to the slow violence unfolding below. This boundary is not just a line on a map. It is the engine driving earthquakes and tsunamis across the region. The same geologic forces that built the mountains of Luzon and the islands of Taiwan now set the stage for the next great release of energy. In this quiet underwater trench, the fate of millions is written in the slow, steady creep of the plates. No earthquake greater than magnitude 7.8 has struck the Manila Trench since the 1560s, at least according to the written records left by Spanish colonists and the oral histories passed down along Luzon's coast. To paleoseismic researchers, this silence is not a comfort. It's a warning. The trench's long quiet is written into the landscape itself. Uplifted coral terraces rise like ancient staircases above the tide in Pangasinan and Ilocos, each step a frozen memory of sudden upheaval. Radiocarbon dating of fossil corals reveals intervals of centuries between these events. One terrace formed around 1800 years ago, another nearly 6,000 years before the present. Each marks a moment when the land was lifted, meters in a single convulsion, then left undisturbed for generations. The absence of major earthquakes in living memory means that strain has been accumulating year after year with nowhere to go. Unlike faults that slip often and relieve tension in smaller doses, the Manila Trench holds its energy for centuries. This is the nature of a highly coupled mega thrust, a fault so tightly locked that decades, even centuries, can pass in apparent calm. The longer the pause, the larger the potential slip when the fault finally breaks. Coral microatolls, mangrove peats, and marsh sediments along the coast all preserve traces of these rare but enormous ruptures. Meter scale uplifts, abrupt changes in elevation, and buried sand sheets that hint at ancient tsunamis. For scientists, the true danger lies in this very silence. A fault that waits centuries between ruptures can store enough energy to reshape coastlines in a matter of minutes. The land itself remembers what human history has forgotten, and the next event grows more likely with every passing year. Late in 2024, a series of small earthquakes rattled the seafloor off northern Luzon. Seismologists at PHYVOLCS tracked 11 tremors above magnitude 4.0 with the strongest, a magnitude 5.6 quake, striking 72 kilometers west of Laog City at a shallow depth. Each event was consistent with the kind of thrust faulting expected along the Manila Trench. While these quakes were too weak to cause damage on land, they set off alarms among seismic analysts. At the same time, GPS stations scattered across northwest Luzon began to detect something unusual. 
The ILOC station in Lawag recorded an eastward movement of 3.8 mm and a northward shift of 1.2 mm between late September and early November. Similar patterns, though slightly smaller, appeared at Pagudpud and Bengay. These changes may sound tiny, but for geophysicists, even a few millimeters in a matter of weeks signal a meaningful pulse of tectonic strain, far above the background drift seen in previous years. Out at sea, pressure sensors anchored to the ocean floor picked up a subtle but telling pattern. The MBTS-1 buoy, floating 95 kilometers west of Lawag, measured vertical changes in the sea floor of up to 8.7 millimeters in a single day, especially after moderate earthquakes. Scientists describe this as the trench breathing, the bedrock rising and falling as strain is shuffled deep below. The effect was episodic, not tied to tides, and often followed the quake swarm by a day or two. Yet, despite these advances, the network of sensors remains sparse. No pressure gauge sits directly above the trench's most dangerous segment, leaving a blind spot where the next major rupture could begin. For seismic agencies and marine labs, these clues confirm that the Manila Trench is not asleep. The fault is shifting now, its locked segments flexing in ways that instruments can finally detect. Each new millimeter of motion, every small quake, adds to a growing sense of urgency. The evidence is clear, the strain is building, and the trench's long silence is growing restless. When the Manila Trench finally ruptures, the ocean floor doesn't just tremble, it moves. In a matter of seconds, vast swaths of seabed can lurch upward by two or even three meters. This sudden shift pushes an enormous volume of water skyward, sending energy racing outward in all directions. The first warning along the coast might not be a roar, but a hush. Harbors draining rapidly, boats tilting as the sea pulls away from shore. That withdrawal is the only clue before the wave arrives, sometimes just minutes later. Tsunami modelers at international centers run simulations showing how these waves, born from a single snap in the crust, can reach speeds of over 800 kilometers per hour across deep water. Faster than a jet, the wave's energy barely slows until it meets the shallows, where it rises up and transforms into a wall of water. For those in its path, the time between seafloor rupture and impact is measured not in hours, but in heartbeats. Along Luzon's western coastline, more than 8 million people live within reach of the first waves. In towns like San Fernando and Dagupan, the geography offers little protection. Low-lying neighborhoods stretch almost to the water's edge. When a tsunami races in after a Manila trench rupture, the difference between safety and disaster is measured in minutes. Municipal disaster officers know the odds. In some barangays, the time from the first sign, a sudden retreat of the sea to the arrival of the wave, might be less than three minutes. Even the most detailed evacuation maps become unreliable if the coastline itself shifts or sinks, as it has in past events. Floodwaters can surge inland, turning streets into rivers and carrying debris with terrifying force. Concrete schools, hospitals and bridges are not built for the kind of impact unleashed by a wall of water moving faster than a car on the highway. For emergency planners, the challenge is daunting. Limited warning, crowded coastlines and the knowledge that every second counts. In drills, municipal teams race to sound alarms and shepherd residents to higher ground. But the reality is that entire communities could be caught between the ocean and the clock. Container ships, oil tankers and bulk freighters move through the South China Sea in a steady procession, linking the economies of Southeast Asia, China and beyond. Along these routes, critical infrastructure stands exposed. Manila North Harbor, Subic Bay and Kaohsiung handle more than 170 million tons of cargo each year while offshore gas fields like Malampaya supply a fifth of Luzon's electricity. A major rupture along the Manila Trench would send shockwaves through these economic arteries. Tsunami models predict that ports from Manila to Vung Tau could be disabled for weeks, with submerged piers, toppled cranes and silted channels halting trade. Oil and gas rigs, some anchored within the projected inundation zones, face direct structural threats, and the risk of catastrophic leaks. Financial analysts model the ripple effects. A sudden halt in shipping through Luzon and Taiwan could freeze up to 7% of East Asian maritime trade. 
energy markets would reel as offshore platforms go dark. Insurance losses could rival or even surpass those from the 2011 Japan disaster. Meanwhile, geophysical models warn that a Manila rupture could propagate northward, triggering sequential slips along the trench toward Taiwan, a domino effect that would extend the crisis across the Western Pacific. For port planners and regional modelers, the Manila Trench is not just a geological threat, but a systemic risk with the power to disrupt economies and societies far beyond the first wave. The Manila Trench stretches 990 kilometers beneath the South China Sea, marking the collision of the Eurasian and Philippine Sea Plates at a rate of about 5 centimeters each year. Scientific records confirm that no earthquake above magnitude 7.8 has struck this fault since the 1560s, Yet recent GPS and ocean floor measurements in late 2024 show millimeter-scale ground shifts and subtle pressure changes, clear signs that stress is building once more. Despite centuries of silence, evidence from coral terraces and seismic swarms reveals the trench's history of sudden, devastating movement. Still, gaps in deep-sea monitoring mean that the exact timing and scale of the next rupture remain unknown. Over 8 million people live within the first impact zones, and regional infrastructure faces severe risk. Today, scientists agree the Manila Trench is active and preparedness is essential. As research continues and technology improves, the key facts remain. This fault is quiet, but it is not at rest.